Expert putter maker Lamont Mann calls the Scottsdale area home, and every man-crafted putter and head cover has been and always will be crafted by hand using 100% American-made materials. To this day, Mann retains the same burning passion for building some of the finest clubs on earth, knowing full well that superior workmanship never goes out of style. And with that, Lamont, we'd like to welcome you uh, to the Second Swing YouTube channel. Uh, you're no stranger to working with Second Swing, but it is great to talk with you today. It's great to be here, man. It's, it's, it's still, I got to pinch myself thinking anybody really wants to see my face. The face made well, me video. Well, you should definitely pinch yourself then because there's plenty of people that are, that are jacked about this. Uh, I want to start, you've got this, this long history in the game. I don't want to age you, but you've, you've been a part of this game for, for over 40 years. Uh, kind of take us back to the beginning. What was it, what was it like at the start of your, of your golf career, and what really kind of inspired you um, to make golf your career and not just a passion? Wow. I, uh, I've been in the game since I was probably playing since I was five. So that, I'll, I'll age myself 50 years. Um, <laughs> there you go. I, I love the game. It was always the putters somehow had just a natural draw. I mean, I, I was a bullseye guy because my dad was a bullseye guy. Um, I remember the very first putter I ever bought was a Lynx Predator, it was part, part wood, part metal. Um, but they always had that draw. And I remember my brother and I, even as 11, 12 year old kids in the garage painting drivers just to make them different so they didn't look like everybody else's stuff. And fast forward to 26 years as a, I was a framer, a wood carpenter. And it's easy when you're 20. It's a little more difficult when you're 30. And when you're 40, your back tells you it's time to get out. And I was constantly searching. And I wound up um, finding, I, I uh, reading a little tiny little ad in the back of Golf Magazine for uh, Answer 2 Patent Pendings at a time when Tiger was playing the Answer 2 Patent Pendings. And a man named Bobby Grace was buying them in Florida. And I'm in the land of pain here in Arizona. So I started buying these putters and sending them to Bobby. and. He was selling them all over the world and I would see putters in these shops when I was, I was specifically looking for an answer too, but you would see all these other putters, the old Tad Moore putters, the old TP Mills putters. And at the time, every now and then a Scotty Cameron sprinkled in and I would buy them here and there and fix them up and sell them on what was back then it was golf web. And then it evolved into golf works, golf And I started, getting calls. Hey, I've got this. Can you fix this up? I've got this. Can you make it look good? And they would send them in. I'd, I'd do them and send them back and they were excited and we could post pictures. And it got to the point where I knew when I was sending out a beautiful putter, it was still a, say it was a Scotty Cameron. People that played with that customer would say, oh, that's a beautiful Scotty Cameron putter. They wouldn't realize that it was, I guess, I have to watch out because ego plays into it. Like, sure. I did that, you know, it's got, it, they sent it to me and I made it look like that. And I started thinking if, if this guy can do it, if Scotty can make putters with all, everything I've learned, why can't I make putters? And I kind of fell into a part-time job at a machine shop and started easing away from framing and uh, started dabbling with, cut my own stuff on the bridge port. I did all handmaids for the first, I don't know five, six years, there was, there was no production version of a man-made putter. Well, there mm -hmm. was, it was a, called the superstition. And uh, it was funny because I, I had a head made by the same, the same machine shop I started working with. They made me a batch of 25 heads. I showed them to my brother and showed them to my dad. And they didn't tell me this at the time, but they're like, man, we didn't think you were going to sell any of them <laughs> because it was so funky looking. But I was able to shape, even back then, I was able to shape, create different looks with that one head sold out that 25, went back, bought another 25, sold out that 25, and I was kind of off and running. And the designs came really slow, but I worked with a company called Sunset Beach, partner to Chris Jordan, and we were a small company with a zero advertising budget, but we held our own. And at the time we were going overseas for our heads, and as we would run out of those heads, I'd take them back to the CNC shop here in Arizona, They'd reverse engineer and they cut our new heads. So we kept at every chance we had, we kept it American made product. And uh, it wasn't always easy, it wasn't always cost effective. But and then I went out on my own. I went to uh, 
company called Hot Sticks, and they let me use their mill in the back and their belt sanders and just gave me a home for about, I think I was with out of one of their areas for the last eight years. And then Simon, Simon came in a few years ago and said, hey, Lamont, I like what you're doing. And we talked a little bit and he, they bought, you guys bought some of my putters at a second swing. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of drifted a little bit. And when he came back and said, hey, Lamont, we're building a store. We want to put you, we want to build a special spot for you in the back. Will you come and look at it? And I came and I looked. And then I brought my wife here. I had my wife. And at the time, we're looking at, we're looking at yellow masking tape on the floor. Okay, this is where right. the shop's going to be. This is right. gonna be my mill. And we're going to put cabinets and tables and, and machines. And uh, it was exciting. You know, she, she tempers her excitement because there's been several people along the way that have said, oh, we're going to make you famous, blah, blah, right. blah. And then nothing happens. And when Simon came in, you could see it was actually happening. And when I walked in the first day and they had the walls up and the glass and the, the windows and the glass doors, and they had Lamont's garage on the door. It was, um, it really caught me off guard and it was really cool. And I think that Lamont's garage thing is going to go, we're going to do a lot with that. And I have to thank Simon a tremendous amount for having, having the vision to put me in here and then the team to get me to where here, we're sitting on YouTube and there's people all over the world that have access to this. And uh, if you Google mancrafted on YouTube, you will see some pretty old and semi ridiculous looking videos. But <laughs> this one, I mean, I I'm happy to be here. The team is amazing. Um, it's been, it's been a really wild four months. So I'm finally getting, I figured it'd take me about six months to get my feet on the ground and get my head straight. So I'm almost there. Well, we're so excited to have you. You touched on 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 so many so many aspects that I'd love to dive into, but I just want to say that the the Lamont's Garage has been a massive success so far. We've talked to so many customers, uh, so many just even employees within the companies. There's such an excitement about about what you're doing there, and we we, we couldn't be happier. And we we're, we're glad that 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 transition is going uh, going well because that's uh, it's become a huge part of our our new Scottsdale store, and um, uh, it's only going to grow in the future. Um, you touched on, on one of the things I want to talk about is, uh, I mentioned it in the opener, is the idea of, of using all American products. And, and kind of there's a, a sense from you and your, and your work that there's really an, an inherent pride in, in every single product that you put out. And even, it, it kind of seems simple, but I want to kind of explore the, the topic of putting your name on your product. And I think there's really, um, it seems like you take a lot of pride in putting that that man-made on your putter, and I, I just want to you know kind of ask you about that and talk about kind of um, the the pride that you feel when you put your name on a product that goes to a customer. I I think it's awesome. I think when a person when when I'm working, I, I can honestly say there's if if you picked up a putter and it says mancrafted on it or man-made or made by Lamont, I can guarantee. 99.9% .9 of the time, I actually had it in my hands and I'm the one that's right. the hammer to make the marks. There, there is one out there that, you know, there's, there's a counterfeit, which I got, I got a kick out of. It was just like, really, you're going to counterfeit me. <laughs> but, um, it's just, and as far as American made, I think, I don't know, it, it almost, I don't want to get political, but I think the American way has always been, we've always been a, a, a country of we do things we make things and there has to be that pride in it and over the last 20 30 years we don't make things and build things we buy things and so for me to be a part a very small part of contributing back to we're making things here we're, mm. we're creating jobs in america and it's 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 huge to me and there's that huge pride of yeah, maybe some of the stuff I'm buying as far as raw materials costs more, but it's, I, I know it's made here and, um, it's, it's a huge amount of pride. Um, I, I've, I've gone to my wife and said, honey, you know, I can get my head covers made. If we order them through this guy, they're going to be one third the cost. Mm -hmm. And she I, just I, looks at me and says, uh, -uh. she goes, no, she goes, don't even think about it. And, and she's been a huge part. Um, keeping me focused, keeping me watching 
what I'm doing and uh, keeping me on track. And she's my one of my biggest cheerleaders, as is the rest of my family. They just and it, and it's tough for me because coming from where I did, I was a framer. I, I built houses. Mm -hmm. My wife knew I was a framer, but she didn't really know anything about what I did because there was no interest in it. Um, so being being a putter maker and she gets to see what's out there. She can compare. She can go online and look at my putters compared to this and this and this, and she can see the difference. And uh, that's to me. You always want to. You always want to make those around you proud of what you're doing. And to hear my dad say how proud he is that I've stuck with it, and it's been it's been really good. I uh, wouldn't change a thing. It's I you know I'd change a couple. <laughs> Everybody does. There's always a couple things. Yeah. But I think with the Lamont's Garage thing, they're again American made and I just I just submitted my first um, art for the t shirts for the first Lamont's Garage t shirts. Perfect. And it's, um, it's it's when you when you get that, that uh artist rendering back, dude, this is gonna be I want them today, you know. I don't want them two weeks from now. I don't want them I want them now. Um but I think guys Guys that get that theme, somebody the other day sent me a text. He goes, Lamont, he goes, Lamont's garage fits you so much better than a studio. He goes, right. a studio guy. He says, you're a garage guy. And I had never thought of it. And uh, this, that's one of the things that your team came up with, the Lamont's garage. I didn't have any input in that. I mean, I walked up and that was the first time I'd heard Lamont's garage was when I saw it on my door. I'm like going, dude, that's cool. Right. No, it's so it's so interesting because it seems like golf clubs, one thing I'm so interested in in them, one of the big reasons is that it's it's kind of the ultimate meeting between kind of art and engineering. And uh, while your putters have an incredible, they're incredibly elegant and they have these, these great aesthetics, I, I get the sense that you are a man who, at the end of the day, is falls more on that kind of engineering side. Um, I, I'm kind of, I would love to dive into kind of the, the beginning of your career and how you think all those years as a framer, and it just seems like pretty much your entire life you've done things with your hands. And I'm curious how, even though you, you, know, you may not have thought it at the time, kind of how those formative years ended up kind of benefiting you in the golf space. Uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind is the, the ability to stamp. You know, okay. when you're a framer and you're swinging a hammer eight, 10 hours a day <laughs> at, at, a, at the head of a nail, um, you put a hand stamp in my hand, it's just like, most of them are bigger than the head of a nail. So it's nothing for me to set a stamp and, and, and really give it a good whack. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as working with my hands, it was something that even I can go back to eight, nine, 10 years old. My grandparents had a ranch in uh, outside of Wilson, Montana, and the garage was right below the house. And it was basically an old cabin that had broken windows and floppy doors, but that's where grandpa kept all of his machines, the, the bench grinders and the, the uh, table saws and stuff like that. And I would go down there and I would spend hours in his shop just going through drawers that had rusty old tools in them and cleaning off all the rust and crying. Just just stuff when I look back, I hadn't I just like making stuff look good and or look new again. And grandpa didn't care because he he knew when I put it back in the drawer, six months from now, it was gonna be rusty again. I'd have another project. And it kept it kept me busy, kept me out of his hair. But um, it's uh, I you're right. I never really paid attention to the fact that I was doing things with my hands, and I was creating things. And I always loved when you would frame a house. We would pull on the job site five o'clock in the morning, and there's nothing but a slab. And when we leave at two o'clock that afternoon, it's a house. I mean, there there's still work to be done, but it's the walls are all up and the trusses are rolled. And there's that there's that pride in workmanship. It's that pride that you, is kind of dormant in a lot of people today. The pride of mm -hmm. workmanship. Um, so this is my way of being able to say, you know, when I, when something goes out, this is the best I can do. And they may not see it. They may see it, but um, it's got my name on it. If they get it and it's not up to their standards, they know without a doubt they can pick up the phone, dial the number that's on my website, and it's not some service that's going to answer the phone. It's going to be me. Right. And I still crack up when they go, "Yeah, it's Lamont there." Yeah, this is Lamont. 
oh, right. I didn't think I was going to get to talk to you. And I'm like, well, you know, if you dial that number, there's only one guy going to pick it up. If there's somebody else picking it up, it's a bad thing. So, but. right. We're so conditioned to getting transferred from one department to another. It's it's really that's one of the things that's so cool is especially in in the store especially is you see Lamont's garage. Well, you look inside. There's Lamont. It's it's uh, it's <laughs> I mean, you know there's no, no, no false, false advertising. advertising. Yeah, it was like the second or third week. There was a gentleman that came to the store and he's looking in and I'm in there and I'm working and I came out and I'm like, hey, is is there something I can help you with? You know, like, you have any questions? Um, yeah, my name is such and such. I'm like, okay, I'm Lamont. Like, you're 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 Lamont. You're Mancraft. You're you're Lamont's I'm Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't expect you to be here. And this is like, you know, this is this is me. It's uh, I I, I love the fact. I you know, guys tease me. Do you feel like you're in a fishbowl? Yeah, sometimes. That's all right. I'll be working on the mill in one corner and turn around, and there'll be a, a father and a father, a husband and wife, and three kids. Kind of standing at the window, and it's, you know, it, I I love it, and it, I love the, I love the fact that they can do that, because I remember going to a, a Byron Morgan shop in Huntington Beach and spending an afternoon, and I went to a Tom Slider shop in Seattle, which was right in his garage, and he allowed me to spend an entire day in his shop, and I remember how cool that was for me. That was before I was making putters. I was still just just refinishing. And it was just like, he was larger than life to me. And it, it just, you know, like I said, I pinch myself thinking that people come here and they look and they see me and they get that feeling. And it's just, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that was blessed enough to get a, get a dream at some point and just kind of keep it warm, keep it warm until it got to the point where I could make something happen. And, uh, Everything fell in place, and I had the support system and great companies behind me, and uh, here I am. So, no, oh, it's really cool. It's it's so cool that even later in life than most people you would think that you can still accomplish those dreams, and you can still aim high and and kind of reach places that um, maybe you thought had passed or, or that were behind you, but you're still. Uh, really just blazing new trails and and yeah as I mentioned I can't say enough how how proud we are that that you're a part of uh, kind of the second swing and handmade sticks family um, when it comes to kind of the your, your process uh, I know from from kind of soup to nuts it's a long kind of complicated process what is the moment kind of the singular moment where along that process where you feel the most pride is it kind of the very beginning when you're, you're kind of cracking a design for the first time? Is it when you're, you're finally swinging the stamping hammer? Uh, what's, what's kind of the one moment where you're holding that putter or you're looking at uh, kind of a design and, you're, and you feel kind of the most, the most pride? I think, I think the most pride comes when, it, when it's a, uh, a design I've never done. A customer and I, maybe we sat down and he sent me some ideas or some different looks that he liked and Maybe it's been, maybe I've been working on it on the mill for five, six, seven hours at different times. And I pull that head off the mill and the head is what I pictured at the beginning. It's ready right. for the neck. Um, it's something different. It's not, a, it, it wasn't a computer program that I, I sat down and I looked at it and I checked, I, I kept tweaking here and there. It's a block of steel that I put in the mill and started cutting. And when I was, when I was done, I took the piece out. I've moved it several times by that point, but I take it out and it looks like what we saw. And I send him a picture of it and their reactions keep me going. I mean, it's, they're like, oh my, and it's like, and then they get it, Lamont pictures didn't do it justice. You know, I get that so often and it's just so, it's fun. Um, it's that taken from a raw block and creating something that you love, that your customer loves, that you know when you put pictures up on Instagram or any of the social media, people are gonna look at it. You're not gonna make everybody happy and that that's okay because mm -hmm. opinions differ and preferences like the blonde brunette, the Ford or Chevy. Um, you put it up, let them, let them look at it, tell, you, tell me what you think. Um, but they always know it's, 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 
it's just a vision that I have and we're able to create it and wouldn't trade it for the world. So that, that, that's the fun part. And it's not bad when you're, when you put that last bit of paint fill in and wipe it off and you stop and look at it and it's, it's, it's done. And you know that the next time somebody sees it, they're going to be pulling it out of the box, taking off the cover and their mind's going to be blown because they, they, I, I get guys at buy putters that have been in different collector circles for years. And, uh, when they come to me, they look at it going, you know, when they're used to paying five, six, seven thousand dollars for a putter, right? None of mine at this time sell for that. And they get one. Well, how can it, how can what you're doing be as good as that one when you're asking a quarter of the cost and they get it? It's like, wait a minute. And the phone starts to ring back. Once they realize that it's a real putter and it, it's not just marketing, I guess. Um, they come back and it's, it's fun. You know, I keep, I, I've probably said it's fun about 50 times in this interview, but it, and I think that's the theme is I enjoy what I do. I enjoy my customers. I enjoy the people I work around. Um, it's been a wild ride and it's, it's got some good stuff coming. So, well, that's, that's a perfect segue. I know. Uh, you've been generous with your time. I know there's there's an empty garage with your name on it that's waiting for you. So I'll, I'll get you out of here on on one last question. Uh, kind of what's what's next? I mean, clearly uh, you're not slowing down at all, especially uh, given your new work arrangements. Um, kind of where do you see you know roughly you know three five years? What is what does Mancrafted look like? <clears throat> that that's that's on, honestly it's a tough one. I think it it, it looks like designs that are in process now are ideas that I've had over the last five, six years that I've gotten to the point where I've got the putters that every, I've got the putters that fit mainstream. And now I can do something that while I keep doing the mainstream putters, I got ideas that have to, you know, might catch on and you'll see different materials being used. Um, some different looks, uh, head covers. I'm excited to get back into head covers. Um, I never wanted to be the trinket guy making little things here and there, but when somebody wants to support Mancraft or man-made mm -hmm. and they don't have five, six, seven hundred dollars to buy a putter, but they can buy a head cover for 75 bucks and get a piece of my art. Yeah, that sounds weird to even say a piece of my art. Yeah. Um, you can, you say, can, it. say, you can say, it. say it. Something that I've had input into, or I've had creative influence in, and still have a piece of my work. The head covers we did uh, the Sugar Schools for the last six years, and then the company that made all of my premium head covers got purchased by a competitor, and so we no longer have that avenue. And it's just like all these ideas that I had. kind of like drew a line and from from that point back they're gone um so now it's a matter of getting new ideas and a new head cover company head covers are going to be big we're going to do a little bit more in the soft goods the t-shirts hats just guys it's just the periphery is going to be mm -hmm. fun but you're also going to see new, new designs and the new designs that's what gets me excited is when you're doing stuff that you put it out there and there's nothing like it and there's a, there's a couple of them that make me chuckle, but you know, for the most part, everything is functional. And with the influences I've had and the friends I've gotten in the business, you've got guys like, like another one of the handmade sticks guys, Tad Moore. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's somebody that I call a friend that 25 years ago, if you'd have told me I would even ever get to talk to him. Oh, no, you know, he's, he's, he's bigger. He was larger than life with Max Flies. And now it's just like, it's a regular thing when my phone goes off. Oh, Tad sent me a message. Cool. And I, you get to talk to Tad. You get to hear the stories and how things have evolved and get his opinion. And he's been so good and so supportive and so influential. And he, he said something to me one day. He says, he said, Lamont, he said, no matter what happens, he goes, everything, everything changes. He goes, no matter what happens business-wise, he says, 
They can't take away what you do. He goes, they can take away everything around you. He goes, but you, what you do is different. He goes, nobody can take that from you. And it's just like, that's the one that sits in the back of my head. You know, you have a bad day. You think, oh, you know, I didn't, th this didn't go right. This didn't go right. I need to file this paperwork. I, okay, they can't take away what I do. And it's, that's, that's the fun part. And the really cool part is everything that's been done in the last few months has been to support everything that I do. And just to make that stronger and to put people around me that know more than me about stuff that I don't know anything about, which there's plenty of that in this world. But now I have people that I can reach out to and ask and keep me kind of on the straight and narrow. And uh, yeah, but as far as future goes, five years from now, I can't even say I'll be 60. <laughs> Everybody says, yeah, but you can retire at 65. And there's another one, you know, retirement's not an age. It's a number, right? So it's, exactly. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's a, uh, I see really good things coming and I've got the, the support system in place where I don't think it's like 20, you know, even 10 years ago, I didn't dare to dream as big as it is now. And here I am. And to think of where it's possible to be in another five years, I'm just gonna let it roll. I'm just gonna keep, I'll keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully moving forward. And with you guys behind me and the awesome team that's here in Scottsdale. This, by the way, for the people who are watching this, if you're in Arizona, Phoenix, and you haven't been into the second swing in Scottsdale, you have not seen the most incredible golf shop I've ever been in. I mean, I've, I've been around the game, like I said, since I was five, and I have never seen a facility like this. I mean, and I'm a club junkie, and I walk in here, and I start to twitch. You know, it's just like I see clubs, I see irons and butters and wedges, and it's just like I'm a reforming club junkie. <laughs> well, Lamont, you said, you said that, that no one can take away what you do, but clearly someone can take away what I do because you just marketed the store better than I ever could. Uh, thank you for sitting down with us. Thank you for taking the time um, to not only you know share your insight, but also just kind of share your work with the whole Second Swing and Handmade Sticks family. Lamont, thanks again for your time. If you would like to see a man-crafted product, just check out secondswing.com, or as Lamont mentioned, visit the Scottsdale store and, uh, and see what he has to offer. Um, Lamont, thank you so much for your time and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Take care.